I would like to live life where I have better control of my wobble and can keep it at a high vibration and can notice those moments when the lions are coming. The way you do that is by looking at manifestations that you've already accomplished that you feel happy about and milking the appreciation that you feel by acknowledging that some things have manifested that were at one time and maybe even for a long time still in a vibrational state and when you chilled out about it then it came into easier view you just have to massage your thoughts into those better feeling places that really is the work and we know friends it feels counterintuitive to humans who have been counting on your action to make things happen but it is our promise to you your action is minuscule in comparison with the power and the leverage of alignment with this vortex most people are offering most of their action or behavior to compensate for not flowing their energy in a productive way you worry about stuff and you don't line up with well-being and you beat the drum of things not going well for you and then when things don't go well for you then you dig in with action and hard work and then you get exhausted because this receiving mode is not just the vibrational place just like you have to set your radio dial on 98.7 FM if you want to hear what's broadcasted from that tower you can't set it on some other frequency you have to tune your tuner to that broadcasting tower and so we want to convince you that this vibrational reality that this vortex is a broadcasting tower that includes everything that you want and all that you are and the path to full manifestation of every bit of it and if you can accept that that is so and then you can just care about tuning yourself to it which just means think thoughts that feel good then everything will turn out the way you're wanting it to such a nice thing you could have five things we know you've heard this that are important to you there are always more than that but let's say five major things and four of them could be going extremely well and one of them not well and you as humans mostly think that you better dig into that one that's not going well and as you do you tune to what's not going well and you actually pinch off the well-being on the other five that were going well Conversely, you could have only one thing that's going well and five things that are going awful. And you could focus upon the one thing that is going well, set your tone by your attention to that, and the other five would fall into alignment because the receiving mode is the receiving mode. But when you believe that you have to work hard to compensate for inferiority or for past wrong deeds, or when you feel that you have to work hard in order to justify your existence, all of those things are so contrary to what your inner being knows about your readiness and your worthiness that you get crosswise of the energy and then you do offer more effort and then you get tired where if you're feeling good about yourself and others if you're looking for positive aspects if you're counting your blessings so to speak looking for reasons to feel good not having knee-jerk reactions to so many things then you're in the receiving mode but the receiving mode is also the replenishing mode that's where your stamina comes from that's where your clarity comes from that's where your vitality comes from that's where the good ideas come from but most humans we love you so much you know what's coming next you are reacting to things so you're looking around wanting to be objective and that's a good thing because you got to sift in order to launch those rockets but as you're looking around so often instead of identifying what you want and running with it you are having a reaction to what you don't want and when you are reacting to what you don't want then you're putting more emphasis on that so you're actually often vibrating more in contrast to what you want than you are in harmony with what you want every subjects two subjects what is wanted in the absence of it so sometimes you're thinking that you're thinking about money when you're really thinking about not having enough of it sometimes you're thinking about having or getting or improving a relationship when often you're thinking about the absence of a relationship or something about the relationship that you've got that you don't want and so if you don't introduce an understanding into this equation of what your emotions are telling you then you can't guide your thoughts at those early subtle stages and if you don't guide them at early subtle stages then law of attraction is going to carry them into greater and greater momentum where you believe then that you have to take action but there's not enough action to compensate for that momentum that's going in opposition to what you want so what's the answer chill out <laughs> the answer is be nicer to yourself the answer is think more thoughts about yourself that feel good and about others too the answer is 
don't work so hard give yourself a break get more rest be nicer to yourself do more of the things that feel good to you that's the way you turn this around you got to give yourself a break you cannot demand yourself into alignment you can't effort yourself into alignment you've got to release you've got to let go you've got to let go of resistance when you let go of that cork we promise you it will float you see so we've written a few books <laughs> And they are significant because they are the pieces that you're looking for. The first book of significance, Ask and It Is Given, in the back of it has 22 processes, each one offered to you to help you to release resistance. Each one offered to just help you release resistance. We don't need to teach you how to goose up your desire. You can't help that. But when you release resistance, then your desires become more dominant, more predominant. You see more evidence of them coming about. We would read the 22 processes in the back of that book if we were standing in your physical shoes. The next book of significance that we wrote for you, it's talking about deliberate creation. It's about focusing and it's about taking the way you feel and using it as the reason that you think the thoughts you think. It's about taking a thought that doesn't feel very good and either choosing another thought altogether or massaging that thought until it feels better. Then another book that came right on the heels of that is The Astonishing Power of Emotions. And that book teaches you about the emotions that you feel and the value of them. That may be the most significant book that you will ever read. That may be the only book that if we were standing in your physical shoes and went out there and there's a big pile of books that we would want. We would want to understand the emotions that we are feeling. And then we wrote a book called The Vortex. The Vortex that explains to you that everything you want already is. And if you're paying attention to how you feel and maybe using some of the processes that help you to release resistance and focusing deliberately that you can get into the receptive mode and let everything in that you want. We haven't been offering these words to you just because we think you want to hear some words. We're answering the questions of how do you create your own reality? How do you create your own reality? By having thoughts that you think. The question is, and this is the question that we're really wanting to put to you, to all of you. Are the thoughts you think, thoughts that you're thinking because you're the creator of your own experience? Or the thoughts that you think, reactionary thoughts because somebody else is having an experience that you're observing and you're having a knee-jerk reaction to what's going on? Because that's a big question. If you are reacting, then you have no control. You're like a cork bobbing on a raging sea. You have no control at all. So, what would we do? We'd put ourselves in bed tonight and we'd say, I am the creator of my own reality and I like that. And then we would say to ourselves, and as I sleep tonight, momentum is going to subside because my thoughts are not going to be active and law of attraction is not going to be reacting to my thoughts. However, law of attraction is going to continue to react to the thoughts of my inner being who never sleeps. So the potential of me waking up in the morning, the probability of me waking up in the morning and the thoughts of my inner being about everything I want being dominant very good possibility of that in fact it's a slam dunk it's a sure thing when i wake up in the morning i'm going to feel the movement of what my inner being knows and my beliefs are going to challenge it but each time a belief challenges the path that my inner being has laid out for me to the success of joy that i seek i'll feel some soft negative emotion and when i feel it i can adjust my thought right then and there and if you will do that tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, it won't be 30 days before you will have bridged your beliefs to be more in harmony with what your inner being knows to be. And you're going to have evidence all around you, evidence all around you of breakthrough after breakthrough. And you know what a breakthrough is? A breakthrough is you breaking through your own resistance. Only two ways to have a breakthrough. Either really get that train going so fast that it doesn't matter what the wall of resistance is, your train's going to break through it. That's hard on you and your train. Or little by little release the resistance so there is no hindrance to who you are and what you're asking for. So now you understand the way creation, deliberate creation works. You heard us. You understand it more clearly than you ever have before. And this body of people is understanding it right now more clearly than anybody has understood it before. You create your own reality by massaging your thoughts into emotionally good feeling emotions. That's it. 
That's really all that it is. That's really all that it is. I've heard it before. I've heard you say that and I've tried the, you know, going to bed at night and setting an attention and now listen to what you're doing here because you're beginning right now even with all of that to argue for your limitations just a little bit because we stacked up about 47 yep. engines going that way and then you said I've tried it before and I'm not so sure that it's working for me <laughs> I'm a good focuser <laughs> and it works when I go that way it works that way too but catch yourself doing that in other yeah. words and that was your knee jerk in other yeah. words when we say you create your own reality your knee jerk given the vibration that you hold is I'm not so sure about that because I don't think I would do things that I don't want to myself that's a sort of knee-jerk reaction and so we don't want you to heed our words or follow our words or do what we say we want you to care about the way you feel and choose better feeling thoughts so our question to you to all of you is how do you think you came to being willing to endure negative emotion what's up with that why would you choose a thought that doesn't feel good when you could choose a thought that does feel good? Well, maybe it's because you wanted the contrast to help you really launch some rockets. Maybe you wanted to be a little hard on yourself so that you'd ask in a stronger way. Maybe you wanted to deprive yourself of what you really want for a while so that you really care about it. Sometimes you do that to your kids. You say, no, wait till your birthday or wait till Christmas. I want you to really want this before you get it because then when you get it, you'll really like it. So you sort of train yourself to hold yourself apart from the well-being that would be there all of the time. But we're really putting a straightforward question to you, to all of you. Why would you, what would cause you to be willing to deprive yourself of feeling good? Why would you beat up on yourself? And the answer is you don't like yourself very much. And the reason that you don't like yourself very much is because you've been looking to disconnected people to like you and they don't like you very much but it's not personal they don't not like you because you're not likable they don't like you because they're not in a likable mood it's not personal they're not depriving you of their love they're just pinched off from their own love so they don't have anything to give you and everybody's gonna give you what they're feeling so if they're all pinched off and you say look at me and give me something they're gonna give you something that you don't like and then you're gonna get used to what it feels like not to be liked and all along your inner being is loving you so much every time you're not being loved by someone your inner being is loving you more because you're asking for it stronger so the more source loves you and the more you don't let yourself feel the love of source and the more you look through cracks of others for them to love you and the more you become dependent upon them those flaky human friends they're just not consistent they're so fickle oh they'll love you if you'll do everything that they want you to do but boy you better not let up for a minute and their love for you will stop because it was contingent upon you pleasing them because we love you so much but you've got this backwards and you've had it backwards for quite a while haven't you but when you get it turned around and you begin to accept that when I feel love, that means I've opened the conduit and the love that is me is flowing through me, not through me only to others, but through me and to me, to me and through me. When you're loving someone else, do you know who receives the greatest benefit of your love? You do because your valves wide open and every cell of your body is resonating with the love that is flowing through you. You see, you got to stop looking for lovables in order to love. You got to love just because that's what you do. You you love and then when you get in that vibration of love oh lovable shows just show themselves you got to talk yourself into feeling good about you you got to talk yourself into feeling good about the situation and it's really worth it it's a big payoff because when you keep your valve open no matter what then good just keeps flowing to you but if you pinch your valve off for some petty little reason that really isn't important because you've got some beliefs that you've been dragging around that haven't served you that well anyway then life can be a sort of hard road yes yep. this seems like an exceptionally good time for a segment of refreshment